My name is Megan Osborne Harrell, and let's get started with informative speeches. What are some subjects that you love to learn about? Better yet, what are some subjects that you already know a lot about that you love sharing with other people? Today we're going to talk about what exactly is an informative speech. Some things to think about when planning your informative speech, tips to make your speech the best it can be, and then some different categories that you can choose from along with an example of a speech that I gave myself not too long ago. So what is an informative speech? Well, the goal of an informative speech is to provide your audience with interesting, useful, and true information. An informative speech is going to cover one clear, concise subject. You want to be very careful not to make your subject too broad. Otherwise, you can find yourself heading down a rabbit hole and end up in a place that was nowhere near where you first started. So try to keep your subject clear and concise. Secondly, an informative speech is a speech that requires research. It's got to be backed up by real true facts and you've got to be able to prove that those are real. When you use research to back up your topic, your audience is going to really buy into what you're saying and you're going to give a much stronger speech. And the third thing that an informative speech always does is it is only statements. There's no opinion. There's no persuading. It is just you sharing information with us. In your informative speech, just like every other speech you're going to give, you're going to tell us what you're going to tell us. Then you're going to tell us. And then you're going to tell us what you told us. So tell us what you're going to tell us, tell us all about it, then tell us what you told us. That's your introduction, your body, and then your conclusion. So let's say you choose to have four main points. This is great for a five minute speech. That gives you a 30 second introduction, four minutes to do four points, one minute for each main point, and then a conclusion. That kind of makes a really nice rounded out speech. None of your main points are too long and none of them are too short. You want them all to be about the same length of time. Now let's talk about planning your speech. Am I presenting this information clearly? You want to be sure that your points make sense, that they lead from one to the next. Then you need to think, am I portraying this information correctly? I've had a lot of students come in and they give me this really strange piece of information and I say, well, where did you find that? And they say, well, I've known that for years. And I said, well, did you look it up to make sure that it was true? And they were like, no, I just assumed it was true. So we can easily accept things in our world to be true when sometimes maybe they're not. So be sure that you vet your information and ensure that it is correct and can be proven. Then, one of the other things you need to think about, is this speech going to be meaningful to my audience? Is this something that they're going to understand and be interested in? So how do you make your speech meaningful? Think about what some of your audience's tastes, wishes, opinions are. Think what is the level of their education and knowledge about the subject. Another way to make your speech meaningful to your audience is think what is the common ground that we have as an audience and as a speaker? Where can I meet them where they are? Another way to make your speech meaningful is think, how can I surprise my listeners? How can I make them really interested in what I am saying? So make sure what you're talking about in your speech is meaningful for your audience. So now let's talk about some tips on how to make your speech very effective. One of the things that I always love to do is I like to tell my audience why they should believe me. Why am I credible? What have I done in the past that shows that I know about this topic? For instance, in teaching these classes, I taught oral comm for years and years, and I've been a teacher for like 15 years. So those are reasons why you should trust me and believe that what I'm saying is trying to lead you in the right direction. Another great tip that I have is when creating an introduction and conclusion. You can make this funny, you can just make it super interesting, it can be a real life story about your own life, but just make sure that you connect the two. So when you're done with your speech, bring your conclusion back to your introduction. It helps it to be really strong, cohesive, and tie it all together. Another thing that I always try to do is I always keep note cards with me. I like to know what it is that I'm about to say, and I like to have it all in a nice order so that I feel confident and cool that I'm not going to get off track. 
And my last tip in creating a strong, informative speech is to have some sort of a PowerPoint or a visual aid. I prefer to have a PowerPoint because there's a lot more options. On my PowerPoint, I have as few words as possible. Try to keep it very simple and concise. Never, never, never write your speech on your slides. First off, your whole audience will be staring at your slides, reading what is on there instead of listening to what you're saying. Also, whatever is on your slides is exactly what you are saying. Why do we need it twice? We don't. So use a picture to support what it is that you're saying and speak at the front of your classroom with confidence that your slideshow is supporting everything that you're saying. One of my best tips is choose a subject that you are interested in. There has to be something in this world that you love, whether it is history or science or math or nature or traveling, you can even do something like the craziest tourist traps in the United States. Which brings us to our last part. Let's talk about the types of speeches that you can give and I'm going to give you an example of one that I've done in the past. The cool thing about informative speeches is there is a ton of different categories to choose from. Things like people. Mozart, Michael Jordan, Nicolas Cage, the list goes on and on with famous people that you can choose. They can be famous because of their political beliefs, because of things that they've done in history to change the world, because of sports, music, or art. Maybe it's someone who has inspired you that's a writer. There's a ton of options when you look at people, and surely there's someone out there who's one of your heroes. Another great option of a topic is time periods. I love the 1960s. That 1955 to 1965 range is one of my very favorite times in history. Not only is the clothing rad, but there were so many things going on politically, and it's a really excellent something to dive into and to learn about. Another cool category to choose is locations. You can choose something very, very specific, like some teeny tiny town that had something horrifying happened to it back in 1904. You can choose a great big city or a country. You can even choose an entire continent. But the bigger and broader you go, the more specific you'll want your subpoints to be. So be sure that if you choose something like a country, that you pick specific things you want to talk about about that country. Like perhaps you want to talk about the type of population that there is, what its greatest resources are, and maybe famous things that have happened in that country that have made a big difference. These are just a few ideas, but there's also events, concepts, the future, effects, entertainment, and objects. There's probably a ton more categories than that, but informative speeches are great because the world is wide open for you. So now I want to give you an example of a speech that I wrote in the past. I ask that you please not use it for your own use, except if you're using it as a teacher in the classroom, which of course you're welcome to do. Now there were a whole lot of ways I could have structured this speech, but the way that I chose to do it was kind of a little bit outside the box. Let's look at it now. It is said that you will eat 200 spiders in your sleep within your lifetime. This might sound like a terrifying statistic, but why? Aren't spiders just little harmless insects? Actually, they're not. They're what we call an arachnid, and today I'm going to share with you some of the common spider's habits, why we might be frightened of these little creatures, and how we as humans have made a ton of money off the idea of the spider. So now at this point I go into my main point. So my first main point is spider habits. Within this main point I talk about the different types of silk that they make, because spiders make like seven different kinds of silk. My next sub-point is creating webs. There's different kinds of webs, like an orb web, or a funnel web, uh, a sheet web, or a cob web. Then my third sub-point is mating and reproduction. Those are all under spider habits. Next, my second main point is are our fears of spiders unfounded? And then I'm going to talk about four things in this point. I'm going to talk about the size and mention a goliath bird-eating spider the speed and talk about a camel spider, how they're sneaky creatures and like to live in the dark like the brown recluse, and then how they can have a poisonous bite, and talk about a black widow spider and a hobo spider. And that's my second main point, are our fears of spiders unfounded. My final and third main point is spiders in popular culture. And I have three different categories, spiders for children, like Charlotte's Web, Spiders for teenagers, like comics, like Spider-Man or Halloween decor. And finally, spiders for adults, movies like Arachnophobia and branding like the Spider brand. 
Finally, I'm gonna come to my conclusion. Today, I told you about spiders and some of their everyday habits, why we might get nervous when we see a spider, and how spiders have become famous in pop culture. So the next time you see one of these eight-legged guys, take a minute to decide if you're really scared of the spider itself, or if your fears are unfounded. So that was my five-minute speech, and I actually would give this speech to my students in class with my slideshow to give them an example. And of course, there's a lot of other ways I could have structured this speech. I could have done an entire main point on interesting spiders and done spiders in the rainforest and spiders in the desert and focused on different kinds of spiders and that have been a main point. Or I could have done an entire thing on the poisons of spiders, which spiders are the most poisonous, what happens to your body when you get bitten by a spider, giving an example of something that actually happened to me when I got bitten by a brown recluse. I do think that by structuring it in a little bit of a different way, you're going to surprise your audience and it's going to be a lot more fun to write. So today we talked about informative speeches. We talked about what they are, some things to consider when you're planning your informative speech, some tips to make your informative speech the best that it can be, different types and categories of informative speeches you can choose from, and then I gave you an example of an informative speech that I have written myself. I hope you're able to use some of this information and go out into the world and make the best, the coolest, and the most engaging informational speech possible. I'm Megan Osborne Harrell, and you got this, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Say bye.